Hello guys, uh, today I will discuss about the embryology of digestive system. In embryology, we will first talk about the fertilization. Basically, fertilization occurs when uh, gametes fuse together, the egg and sperm. Uh, when these gametes fuse together, we get zygote. Important weeks of development of GID. First of all, we talk about the week one. In the week one, uh, implantation of zygote occurs. And during the week two, completion of implantation of zygote occurs and the uroplacental circulation occur and also the one of the most important uh, event is formation of the layers there are two layers formed epiblast and hypoblast and during the week three uh, as we know gastrulation occur uh, basically gastrulation is the formation of germ layers from the epiblast uh, these three germ layers are ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm as uh, we are studying the development of GIT, only endoderm is uh, connected to the endoderm. In the incorporation of endoderm, the primitive guts form. This incorporation uh, forms a tube that is called primitive gut. Uh, as we know, the primitive gut is consists of two ends. One is called cephalic end and other is called the caudal end. Uh, in the mid region, there is a midline gut, and the upside of this uh, um, uh, primitive gut, there is amniotic cavity, and in the downward, there is yolk sac. From the cephalic end, the foregut uh, drive, and the from caudal end, hind gut drive. In the mid region, the midline gut drive. Now we will talk about the steps of primitive gut. Uh, in the steps, we have basically four steps pharyngeal tube, fore gut, mid gut, and hind gut. Now, further, we will uh, explain a little bit the steps. Pharyngeal tube basically it is part of the fore gut, which is start from the oropharyngeal to the uh, till the respiratory diverticulum, and the fore gut it starts from the respiratory diverticulum till the liver beds, and the mid gut uh, starts from the right uh, one third and left two third till to the uh, transverse colon and hind gut hind gut uh, starts from the transverse membrane till the colloquial membrane some important points we have to know about the primitive gut is that the lining of primitive gut is uh, done by the endoderm while the stroma uh, muscle and connective tissues are uh, derived from the mesoderm. Development of foregut. Uh, the foregut is developed uh, when the respiratory diverticulum, basically respiratory diverticulum is a pouch-like structure which appears during the fourth week of development in the venter wall of the foregut. It is known as the respiratory diverticulum. Basically, the process, uh, the tracheoesophageal septum divides the diverticulum into two portions, the ventral portion and the dorsal portion. Ventral portion later it develops into trachea and dorsal portion later it develops into esophagus. In the dorsal portion, esophagus in the beginning it is very short in length but later on uh, it length increase the upper two third muscles are striate and the lower uh, one third muscles are consist of the uh, smooth muscles the nerve supply for the upper two third muscles are through the vagus nerve and the lower uh, one third through by the uh, cephalic nerves as we can see in the picture uh, from a respiratory diverticulum in the fourth week it appeared like a but structure uh, then the uh, tracheoesophageal septum divided into two portions the ventral portion and the dorsal portion later the ventral portion developed into the trachea and the dorsal portion as we can see it developed into the esophagus now we will discuss about the possible 
uh, clinical related diseases to the abnormalities to the foregut. First of all, uh, there can be esophageal atresia and uh, tracheoesophageal septum fistula. First of all, we will discuss about the atresia. Basically, atresia is uh, abnormality or congenital abnormality where uh, the tube is completely closed while fistula is called uh, when the very narrow opening due to which impairment or abnormal uh, any abnormal ca abnormality can come uh, if we talk about the causes um, tracheoesophageal septum maybe it, it is due to tracheoesophageal septum defects or the abnormal attachments mm, if there is abnormal attachments or if there are abnormal um, abnormal septum defects then it directly it will effect on the fluid movement uh, the fluid movement will be impairment due to which the polyhydroamides will uh, will form because uh, there is no passage of, uh, for the fluid uh, due to this esophageal uh, stenosis can cause and one of the most important clinical uh, related uh, clinical abnormality related to this forget is the hiatus hernia or diaphragmatic hernia now we will uh, talk about how the hiatus hernia develop basically when the esophagus is abnormal short uh, due to which stomach pull up because the uh, the esophagus is shorter than the normal length then it tries to move up and it moves towards the diaphragm which called uh, which causes the diaphragmatic hernia that's all for today guys uh, i hope you like the video uh, our next video will be about uh, development of uh, stomach